When it comes to RTS games, and especially World War II RTS games, you can't look past the Company of Heroes franchise. It is the quintessential World War II RTS game that since 2006 has came to represent the setting in the genre. But since the launch of Company of Heroes in 2006, the franchise had never had a console release. But what made this even stranger was that the game got an iOS slash iPad port in 2020. Finally, in 2023, the franchise had reached the PS5 and Xbox One series with the launch of Company of Heroes 3. But at this point, you may be wondering, what exactly is Company of Heroes 3? and what makes the Company of Heroes franchise worth playing? And finally, how does it play on controller? So let's jump into it. For those unfamiliar with Company of Heroes, it is a franchise set in World War II, and this time around, the game is based on the North African and the Italian theaters of war. This means you can play as the Allies, consisting of the British or the United States, or the Axis, consisting of the Wehrmacht or the Afrika Korps. To add a little bit more depth to each faction, you can also choose from a list of three battle groups which have their own unique technology tree with passive and special abilities. These battle groups help guide your faction towards a certain playstyle. So for example, if you choose the United States, you'll be able to choose between the airborne battle group focused on power dropping, the armored battle group focused on more vehicle based playstyle, and the special operations battle group that focuses on a more passive upgrades and more specialized units. Some battle groups also add a sense of mini factions with the Africa Corps having two Italian battle groups and the British having Indian artillery battle group. Now that we've looked at factions, let's get into actual gameplay. So when it comes to gameplay, if you've seen my Iron Harvest review, you would immediately start to notice the similarities between the games. And this is because Iron Harvest gameplay is heavily based on the Company of Heroes series. But for anyone who hasn't played them before, you need to understand that Company of Heroes is not a mass unit building or even base building RTS. The game's combat is a lot more similar to Sudden Strike 4's real-time tactics type of gameplay, where every unit is extremely important, where you constantly have to keep tabs on your troops and retreat them out of battle so they can heal. While you do have a small base where you can build a handful of your buildings and troops in, the majority of your focus is on the battlefield maneuvers and tactics. But let's get into details on how it plays. So in the game, you start off with an infantry unit and a command HQ. To gain more resources, you'll need to capture and hold points on the map, and more importantly, to win the game, you need to control the majority of the victory points on the map, or destroy the enemy. So both teams start off the battle with about 500 victory points, but it can be changed for custom matches. So when a team is holding majority of the victory points, so for example 2 out of 3 of them, the enemy points will slowly decrease until they hit 0 and they are defeated. So when it comes to base building, like I mentioned before, you can build some buildings in your base to help unlock new unit types. However, the majority of buildings you can create are you reinforcing your resource points or you building defensive structures on the battlefield. These defenses can include sandbags and mines or more faction specific defenses like machine gun emplacements and anti-tank structures. But be aware, maneuverability plays a major part of the game. This is especially true when it comes to special artillery abilities that can easily see most of your army wiped out instantly. We'll get into combat a little bit later. For now, let's have a look at the different modes you can play. So firstly, be warned that Company of Heroes 3 requires internet connection to play, and I don't mean just multiplayer. I mean you need active connection to play all modes, including the single player against AI. So if you have internet connection issues, this might not be the game for you. But that aside, the game modes include single player, multiplayer, co-op versus AI, and custom game. So when it comes to single player, the game has two campaigns and a skirmish mode against AI, where you can have matches ranging from 1v1 all the way up to 4v4. So when it comes to multiplayer matches, you can play versus other people or co-op against AI. But on the console version, it is a few patches behind the PC version. So multiplayer on the console edition at this time does not have any in-depth ranking system or any type of multiplayer progression system. However, the biggest concern is that the game does not have a crossplay, which means the queues at the moment can be up to 5 to 20 minutes long. And without crossplay, this may end up becoming even longer with time. This means, unless you have a group of friends to play with, it may become harder to play multiplayer. So this game may be an experience that most players will probably play single player with a group of friends. So noting that, let's get a little bit more into the single player. When it comes to single player, other than the skirmish matches against AI, one of the biggest parts of Company Heroes 3 is the two campaign modes. There is a North African operation where you play as Rommel's Africa Corps. This plays like a traditional linear RTS campaign. This means it has a story with cutscenes and a variety of missions with their own unique objectives and settings. The North Africa operation plays like similar RTS campaigns you may have experienced before. I bring this up because a big point of difference of Company of Heroes 3 campaigns is actually the Italy campaign. The Italy campaign plays like a small version of the Total 
total war games world map, but it's just over Italy in World War II. By that I mean it is an open world sandbox map that is turn based. On the map, you can build units and use them to go around taking out enemy positions and capturing towns. When the battles start, you zoom in and complete a battle on the map. This mode has a selection of random and pre-built missions. The missions are not all just the same as skirmish mode. So one mission may have you defending two bridges, while another may have you rescuing some units from a building. While this type of campaign is a nice change of pace from a lot of traditional RTS story campaigns, the mode felt like the early stages of a potential full-fledged sandbox campaign that we may see in the future of Company of Heroes games. While a lot of people may enjoy the different take on the genre, I found that a lot of missions can start to feel repetitive, and I would have loved to see a little more customization features on the world map. In saying that, while I did not enjoy the overall execution of the campaign, I enjoyed the overall premise. Undoubtedly, it does add something different to the console RTS space, and I'm hopeful for its future direction. Also, by having the other North African campaign, it still allows fans to have an experience similar to the other campaigns in the franchise. But, like I mentioned before, let's get into the combat, or more specifically, what makes Company of Heroes 3 a game worth playing? Okay, speaking of combat, when it comes to the different units you build, Company of Heroes 3 has a diverse range of unit types. Just to name a few, you have infantry, engineers, machine gunners, mortar squads, anti-tank cannons, light vehicles, heavy vehicles, and this doesn't even include the range of air support options or other specialty units. With so many troop choices, the game does a good job of limiting resources to allow different troop types to shine at different stages of the game. Like most great RTSs, combat generally happens in stages. You won't see the enemy bring in a heavy tank until later in the game. The restricting of unit through building requirements and technology allow distinct battle stages. While most RTSs do this, this is especially prominent in Company of Heroes, as only certain units have the weaponry to even damage vehicles. So, if you don't keep up with upgrading troops, you can quickly become overrun by enemy armor that you can't even damage. So when it comes to the battles, in typical real-time tactics, real-time strategy fashion, Company of Heroes uses an enemy unit type counter system with a little RNG thrown in. This means we use machine gunners to suppress enemy infantry so they can't move, or anti-tank guns to try and keep enemy tanks at bay. And since these type of weapons also have a certain Certain field of view, it means setting up units in strategic positions is essential, as enemies can quickly flank your position, or even throw a grenade that can nearly instantly take out your squad. But at this point, you're probably wondering, what makes Company of Heroes 3 unlike a lot of other console RTSs? Well, when it comes to the map design, moment-to-moment -moment tactical battlefield decisions, and map destruction, Company of Heroes 3 is one of the best in the genre and in console. While the game doesn't have the most amount of map choices, with only a handful for each team size, the maps shine in their different city layouts with different terrain and numerous choke points to allow for a lot more tactical decision making. The map design is a key component of Company of Heroes. In the game, infantry units can garrison into abandoned buildings on the map and they can use anything on the map as cover. This can include sandbags, the corner of buildings, or even a destroyed wreckage of a vehicle. This means the battlefield is constantly changing as the battle progresses. And this is where Company of Hero 3 truly shines. It's in the destructible terrain and combat animations. Seeing the unit combat animations as anti-tank rounds can just ricochet off a heavily armored tank as artillery shells fly through the sky, or seeing your troops duck and dive as they are fighting behind cover, makes the combat in the game feel more detailed and engaging. But what sets Company of Heroes 3 apart is seeing the impact that these battles have on the map. This is what truly makes the game such a unique experience. As you play, the buildings will crumble, artillery shells will create craters, and the wreckage of tanks on the battlefield will force you to constantly adapt. This destruction also allows for more player choice, as sometimes, instead of a head-on assault on an enemy position, you might use an artillery strike to destroy some of the defenses before going in, or you may just decide to make a head-on assault with a heavily armored tank leading the charge, while you keep your infantry behind your tank as a form of brief mobile cover. It's Company of Heroes 3 ability to make these little battlefield moments which make the game feel so unique and worth playing for people who want this type of more tactical focus in an RTS. It's a game that allows a depth of tactical gameplay by forcing you to constantly scout the enemy position, to maneuver your forces and plan out every step before you make a decision. But the game also has enough elements of an RTS with its unit construction and resource management to create a a strong mix between the game types. The game truly is the best mix of both RTT and RTS gameplay. So how does Company of Heroes 3 console edition play? 
Firstly, there's been numerous people on PlayStation noting that they've had issues with crashes. However, I can only speak to my experience, and on the Xbox Series X and throughout my time playing, I haven't run into any major crashes or bugs. And when it comes to graphics, the game has a performance mode and resolution mode. At the start, I found the background textures to be a little bit blurry, while the objects on the screen such as trees and obstacles had a lot more high detail. However, once switching to resolution mode, I started to get used to it. When it came to overall game performance, while I occasionally had issues with buttons not registering, for example, I had an issue with selecting troops and the retreat command not activating. However, it didn't happen often enough to run the experience. But let's get into what most people would probably be wondering. How does a tactical RTS like Company of Heroes that is so dependent on maneuvering troops and retreating at the correct moments play on controller? Well, I can happily say that the controls work surprisingly well. The button layout did not feel like a lot of RTSs I've played before. However, it is intuitive and it worked. But a lot of issues that players may run into is that sadly, the tutorial did not dive deeply into the controls. It did give a great job stepping you through the, the basics, however, it would have been nice to have an option for a more in-depth tutorial, especially ones more linked towards competitive play. I found myself having to regularly go back to the controller layout in settings to learn about some button controls. But in saying all of this, you can tell they made a good effort to make the console version controls feel intuitive. So some of the controller's choices include pressing up on the D-pad to bring up your production building radial menu so you can build troops from anywhere in the map. And at this point, the radial menu is the foundation of console RTSs. And it's easy to see why, because it does suit the game in the controller. Other control choices are using down on the D-pad to access the overall global troop menu, where you can select different troops and make commands without having to directly see your troops on screen. Speaking of which, you can actually leave your cursor on a unit and the game will automatically follow them. I found this to be useful when sending in tanks or early game in allowing me to follow units as they are capturing points. One of the best controller design ideas in the game is how easy they have made retreating and using unit commands. So for example, if you click on any troop, you can click the Y button to quickly retreat your units back to their main base to heal. You can also quickly hold the left trigger when selecting on unit to bring up commands. This is especially useful when raiding with infantry, as you can quickly activate grenades. With the intuitive controls aside, there are some minor issues with controller when it comes to multiplayer. Firstly, luckily the game has keyboard and mouse support on console, which is great. However, multiplayer doesn't have crossplay or matchmaking based on input device. This means you can be playing against people on console using keyboard and mouse. Furthermore, in multiplayer, you also start to see some of the limitations of controller. So small details start to have a bigger impact on gameplay. So for example, in the game, if you want to build troops, you click up on the D-pad to use your radial menu to select the building you want. But the game then closes the radial menu, forcing you to repress the trigger to actually go into that building menu. While this is an extremely minor issue, it slows down your overall reaction time and gameplay flow. In saying this, there might be a way around this, but again, due to a lack of competitive play tutorials, you'll have to learn a lot of controls as you play. Other minor issues I ran into were accidentally moving my camera when you're trying to quickly move around the map. However, that wasn't often, and this could just be my experience. Also, a major feature that makes the game manageable on console is the tactical pause feature for single player. This allows you to pause the game and give multiple unit orders at the same time. However, sadly, for multiplayer, it does not have any similar mechanics to make it easier. But overall, the controls work surprisingly well. I never felt like I had a diminished experience when playing. I got to enjoy all the best parts of what makes the Company of Heroes franchise such a unique experience. Ultimately, Company of Heroes 3 Console Edition provides a full-fledged PC RTS experience for the controller. It is a game where I honestly felt like the controller was just a different way to play instead of a lower quality experience. While it's not the perfect game, it still provides the console an experience that is rarely available and has those moments that make Company of Heroes games memorable. So if you're looking for a World War II game that is mixed between real-time tactics and a real-time strategy, where you need to constantly adapt to the changing battlefield, where planning and unit maneuvering play pivotal role, then Company of Heroes 3 Console Edition might be the game for you. Thank you for listening and please subscribe.